What's up desktopers, Xavier Wolves here for Desktop Bodybuilding and in this video I'm discussing Mikel Crizo making the move from the IFB Elite Pro League to the NPC and if he goes on to win his pro card, the IFB Pro League where he'll be taking on the likes of Big Rami, Nick Walker trying to get to that Mr. Olympia title. I break down his strengths and weaknesses, can he match up with those top pros, plus I show his crazy transformation over the last four years. All that plus much more coming up in this video guys, I hope you enjoy it. What's up, desktopers? Now, before I get into this one, I want to encourage you guys, if you like and appreciate this content, please give this video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, including our all new podcast called Bodybuilding University, featuring myself, Nathan Diasha, who's come as high as seventh in the Mr. Olympia, Brett Wilkin, who finished second to Hunter Labrada last year, who went on to finish fourth in the Mr. Olympia, and also Martin Fitzwater, who did very well in his pro debut season last year. He's looking crazy just four weeks out of his debut contest for the season. So make sure you check out that podcast. The latest episode is up now. I'll put the link in the description below to that as well. And we also interviewed Keon Pearson on the episode prior as well. So the podcast is killing it. So make sure you do check that out. Anyway, let's get straight into this one because this is huge news. Mikkel Crizo, he's been talked about moving from the IFB Elite to the NPC and eventually the IFB Pro League for years now because he's got a great physique. Everyone's wondering how he'll do against these top names like a Nick Walker, like a Big Rami, like a Brandon Curry, like a Hardy Chupin because his physique is that damn impressive. Now, he's made some huge gains over the years as well and we'll get into all of that. But first, this is how I found out about the news. This is posted on the EVLS Prague Pro official Instagram page and they said, dear fans, as you all know very well, EVLS Prague is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. During these 10 years, it has created a solid place, not only in the bodybuilding world, but also in your hearts, which we greatly appreciate and thank you for. That is why we are happy that we managed to enter into cooperation with a personality whom we respect very much and we believe with our support, he will achieve many successes and fight for the highest one, Mr. Olympia. Mikhail Cruzo is the new member of the EVLS team. Mikkel has decided to end his time in the Elite Pro Federation, and we are extremely honored that he'll be showing his qualities in the NPC Federation as a member of the EVLS team. Now, EVLS, for you guys that don't know, there's been an EVLS Prague Pro for many years now. We've been giving away a good amount of prize money. So he's signed with the EVLS sports team, and I'm assuming that part of all this and part of him signing this deal, they probably threw a decent amount of money at him. Part of that is probably saying, hey, if we're going to sign you for this amount of money, you need to move over to the NPC and IFB. Or maybe he said, I want to move over to the NPC and IFB. Maybe I'll try to link up with these guys. I don't know which way it happened and how it worked out, but it definitely seems like a good move for Mikkel Crizo. You can see him kind of signing a contract here on the screen as well. So extremely excited to see how he does in the IFB and the NPC. And if you're wondering what the difference is between the IFB Elite Pro League and the IFB, I suppose, Pro League, where you see the Mr. Olympia and all that sort of stuff. It's basically years ago now, um, probably five to 10 years ago, there was a split between the IFB Amateur International League, which is run by Rafael Santoja, and basically Jim Mannion and the NPC and the IFB Pro League where the Mr. Olympia is. There's basically a split. They created you know, the IFB uh, International Amateur League, created the IFB Elite Pro League, and then the NPC basically went worldwide, and that still feeds the IFB Pro League, where we see the Mr. Olympia and all that sort of stuff. So there was a split there. So Mikiel Cruzo has been competing with the IFB Elite League, and now he's moving to the NPC, where he can qualify to be an IFBB Pro, and then eventually you know, go and compete in pro shows and qualify for Mr. Olympia and get invites to the Arnold Classic, where I think he'd be a prime candidate because he's an international competitor, He's obviously a huge name as well, and people are excited to see him on stage. So I'm assuming the Arnold, Arnold people will be reaching out to him instead of him having to apply for an invite. And if he did apply for an invite as well, once he turns pro, I'm assuming he'll get that invite straight away. And it'd be a cool pro debut as well, and he'd be up against some big names. So I think it'd be a great space for him to actually make that pro debut rather than being in a small show. But I'm assuming he probably will do a small show over in Europe first, possibly just to get his feet wet. But I wanted to show you another reason why I'm so excited to see Mikel Crizo compete in the IFB Pro League. 
Now, the photo on the left is from 2017, where I think it's about 106 kilograms. Um, I'll put the conversion up on the screen right now. And then on the right, where he's 126 kilograms, just four years later, 2017 to 2021. It's obviously 2022 now. If he gets his pro card, it might be 2023. So that's an additional two years on this photo of gains, and who knows what that will actually look like, because the 2021 version was very, very impressive. Now let's go through his strengths and weaknesses, and we'll start with the big strengths on his physique. And the first one that comes to mind and that you see when you see some photos, and when you go straight to his Instagram page, is those crazy arms. They're absolutely ridiculous. The biceps are huge, they're round, the triceps hang pretty low, and really it is a standout body part on his physique. And you can see in the gym here, just the shoulders and arms, the triceps, the biceps, even the forearms are pretty decent as well, but they're definitely overshadowed by those crazy shoulders and arms. And like I said, look at the shoulders on this one. You can see the medial delt poking out a ton there without it looking like it's all oiled and jimmied up and stuff as well. Uh, the chest is also a pretty decent strength of his. It's pretty complete from top to bottom. He's got an upper chest, which is something some guys lack. And uh, that makes his overall physique, at least for front shots, look very complete. And another strength on his physique as well is his tight midsection. Now his abs aren't overly developed, where if he stands next to a Nick Walker, Nick Walker has those super thick, developed, really hard abs. He doesn't have that, but he does have a very, very small waist for a huge dude. I don't know how big he is in terms of weight. I don't know exactly how tall he is as well. I think he appears taller in photos than he actually is, but I know he's not a short guy, so he's gonna be able to stand stature-wise with a lot of these top IFB pros too. So let's discuss a few of his weaknesses. So when he turns to the back, his back is definitely not as big and it's overshadowed by those huge delts and arms. But that's sort of to be expected a little bit with his physique because his back isn't terrible. It comes in condition, but also the glutes are a little bit lacking as well. So that back shot just definitely doesn't look as complete. The shoulders and arms, absolutely stand out and he's still got cuts through his shoulders, which is a great thing to see as well in pro bodybuilding, but he definitely needs a little bit more width on that back and uh, definitely more glute development as well. If he's gonna match up with some of those, you know, crazy physiques in the IFB Pro League, like, you know, the Nick Walker's from the back, the Brandon Curry's from the back. Now, Brandon doesn't have the biggest legs from the back, but I think he just needs a little bit more meat and a little bit more width to his lower lats on those shots. Now, another slight weakness I'd say, and it's only slight, is the legs. I think you'd use a little bit more overall leg uh, more so the quad than anything. He has decent adductors. Um, from the back, they don't look as obvious. Uh, from the side, his hamstring's pretty decent. But if you could put a little bit more on the quads, it'd sort of balance out his crazy big arms because they sort of stand out a little bit over his whole physique. But he definitely has legs. They're not bad, but they're definitely not a strength of this. So it's something he would definitely work on to take his physique to the next level. Now, he's been compared to tons of pros, online videos, forums, all that sort of stuff on social media. And here's a shot of him next to Big Rami. Now, this isn't his most recent physique, I don't believe, but you can sort of see the comparison a little bit there. You can still see where Big Rami has the physique. And you know, I really notice it in the back. Even in that front shot, I notice it in the back. Like Big Rami, even though his back is in his strongest part, body part, you see how much meat there are on those lats from the front. And that's where Mikel Cruzo really falls down. So I don't know which year this actual photo on the right is from, but I did find this comparison online. I think he's a little bit more developed now. Maybe it's an extra year or two after that. But I think that's sort of where he'll struggle a little bit. Now, if he can bring that up and bring the legs up a little bit more, bring the glutes up a little bit more, the arms, you don't have to worry about. The chest and shoulders, they're pretty good. Um, but if you can bring those other body parts up a little bit more, he's definitely going to be like a top six contending guy in the Mr. Olympia, I believe, as long as he comes in razor sharp conditioning, because he hasn't always been absolutely shredded to the bone in the IFB Elite, but he's always been the best guy there. So he's probably been able to get away with slightly off conditioning at times, but he's not always off by any means. I've seen him with shredded glutes, all that sort of stuff. But um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Where would Mikel Crizo place in the Mr. Olympia? Just say he competed this year or next year. Where do you think he can place and where do you think he would place? If I had to put a number on it and totally guess and say he qualifies for the 2023 Mr. Olympia, I'd say he'd be top 10, but not breaking the top five, somewhere in that six to 10th range. I know that's sort of a cop out and sort of somewhere in the middle of a range where people might say he is, but that's sort of where I think he'd fall. I think he'd have a few structural deficiencies once he stands next to these top, top pros, but I still think he'd do very, very well. And then he can climb from there because he's made, like I said, he's made some great improvements over the last couple of years. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below about Mikhail Crizo making the move from the IFB Elite to the NPC and IFB Pro League. 
Also, before I wrap this one up, I want to get your guys' opinion on these. So, Bodybuilding University is the new podcast, like I mentioned at the start of this episode. I've made up some hoodies. Uh, they're not actually made yet. These are mock-ups. Let me know if you like these designs, what else you'd like to see in terms of clothing. Would you buy them? Would you not? Because I don't want to put them out there if no one's going to really want them or buy them. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you like to see a first hundred where you can have some like OG fans? I can make an OG t-shirt so obviously the guys that actually follow the podcast now can be like look i was one of the first hundred to get one of these jumpers or t-shirts or whatever when the podcast is actually blowing up in the future let me know your thoughts in the comments below about these jumpers and if you like to see t-shirts singlets all that sort of stuff as well Plus, a couple quick shout-outs before I wrap this one up, because this story was sent to me by Stefan Ovuka, who sends me a ton of stuff on Instagram, and it's much appreciated. Also, team.star on Instagram, which is Rob Star, uh, he also sent this story to me as well. I think he's actually the first one. So, like I said, huge news. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's it from me for Xavier Wills Desktop Bodybuilding. We are out. <music>